Hi, this is Mrs. Nelson. This is Unit 1, Lesson 5, Bases and Heights of Parallelograms. The objective says I can write and explain the formula for the area of a parallelogram. So a formula is an efficient way of performing the same calculation over and over and over again. You're familiar with a formula from fifth grade for finding the area of a rectangle. You could count squares inside of the rectangle, or if you don't have it on a grid, then you can also use the dimensions of length and width. And you can multiply those dimensions together, area equals length times width, and you can figure out how many squares of the same size would be inside that shape, whether it's on a grid or not. And so that is a formula. It's that efficient way of finding the same calculation and applying it in similar ways over and over and over again. So shape A is a parallelogram. It's also in rectangular form. So I could use the formula I already know, length times width. So I see I have a length of 4 and a width of 2. So using that formula, length times width, I don't have to count. I know there are 8 squares inside of that rectangle. I could count. That's fine. But that's a less efficient strategy. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 squares inside. Well, shape B is also a parallelogram, but it's not in rectangular form but I could decompose and rearrange it. So I could cut off that triangular piece on the left, shift it over there to the right, and create a rectangle. And then with that rectangle, I can apply that formula from elementary school, from fifth grade, and I can see that there would be a length of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and a width of 2. So I can multiply 5 times 2, and there would be 10 squares inside of that rectangle, that newly formed rectangle from the pieces of that parallelogram. Well, we can keep doing that, but that would involve us seeing the decomposition we can do and rearranging it and think ab thinking about it, at least visualizing it or maybe doing it tangibly, but there's a more efficient way. You'll notice that this length right here, that is the length that would be the length of the rectangle if I decomposed and rearranged that triangle, that's the exact same length as this because it's the length of the bottom or the base of this triangle and uh, this segment right here as well. So I've got this segment of three plus a segment of two and it doesn't matter if I put that segment of two to the left or to the right, that's the exact same distance. So I'm gonna start applying a new vocabulary to differentiate from length and width because this is not in rectangular form. I'm gonna start calling this the base and then the um, other measurement, my height. And my height is where I would have cut to make that uh, decomposition, to decompose it into that triangle and other piece to form my rectangle. You'll also notice it forms a right angle. Base and height pairs form right angles. Um, and another word we can use that for, for that is perpendicular. They are perpendicular to one another. Well, like I used in elementary school, I could multiply length times width. Well, my length and my base are exactly the same measurement. My uh, width and my height are exactly the same measurement, so I can use a similar kind of formula. I can multiply that base times that height to get uh, my area, or the number of squares inside. So my base is 5 units, my height is 2 units. 5 times 2 would tell me that there would be 10 squares inside of that shape if I were to decompose and re rearrange it into a rectangle. But I want to get more efficient, so I'm not going to. So let's practice that formula again. Again with A, so I have a base of 4 and a height of 2. I can multiply those two together and see that there would be 8 squares inside of that shape. All right, so shape C is not a rectangle, but it is a parallelogram. Again, I could decompose and rearrange and make a rectangle out of that parallelogram. But again, we're trying to become more efficient, so we're trying to find a faster way. So I can consider that spot where I decomposed um, that parallelogram into two triangles, and I'm going to start calling that my uh, one of my dimensions, my perpendicular dimension. So I've got one here on the left, and then I've got that cut mark that goes horizontally across as well. So I'm going to label one as my base and one as my height. Does it matter which is which? No. But we often use a side of the shape as our base and then we determine the height if needed if it's not a rectangle. Um, and so this would be labeled correctly as a base and height pair. Again, I can use that formula of area is equal to base times height. That's going to tell me how many squares would be inside that shape. So the base is 2, the height is 4, 
So 2 times 4 tells me there would be 8 rectangles inside of that parallelogram. And we can see that if we decomposed and rearranged it into a rectangle. And guess what? If we cut off that triangle of a piece and shifted it down, it would look exactly the same as rectangle A. And that is why rectangle A and parallelogram C have the same area. They are made up of the same parts. They've just been decomposed and rearranged to have a different appearance. The objective says I can write and explain the formula for finding the area of a parallelogram. I can apply that formula over and over and over again to efficiently calculate the area of any parallelogram. I can use the formula area equals base times height with any parallelogram. I can identify a perpendicular pair of base and height and multiply them as an array to figure out how many squares would be inside as though I had decomposed and rearranged it into a rectangle. So it's like taking those steps that we've done so far and doing it faster and more efficiently so that we can do it over and over and over again in shorter amounts of time. Thanks for watching.